Good morning. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to Morning Devotions. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by and spending a little time with me. I really enjoy it. And so make sure that you like and subscribe and I guess hit a notification bell so you know the next time something is uploaded. I'm going to try to do these devotions every morning. I can't think of a reason why I wouldn't unless I was ill. But uh, I won't get sick because I walk in God's health. <laughs> Grab your mocha. I love my Maggie's morning mocha. I love it. Or your tea or coffee, water, whatever you're drinking. Let's spend a few minutes hearing what God has to say. We're doing our we're taking our devotions, of course, from the Daily Prophecy by Brenda Kuhneman. And I link her information below so that you can contact her or contact the ministry, get your own copy, or check out some of the other things that they have. Wonderful, anointed, prophetic ministry, her and her husband, Hank. All right, let's hear our prophecy for today. The sending anointing is what it's called. See that I have reserved for you a sending anointing, says the Lord. And as you allow me to develop your character in humility, so shall I send you forth, endorsed, in, endorsed, endorsed with apostolic influence. Hmm. Apostolic influence. Ascending anointing. That's very important. Because that is how the kingdom grows, is when people are sent. Now, does that mean that God is calling all of us? I said, with an apostolic influence. So, Lord, I want you to get that into my heart so I have a better understanding of what you're saying there. Develop your character in humility. We do need to be humble. I think that's where God shines the brightest is through his humble vessels. But I think we're entering a time in church history where God's people, you're talking end time harvest stuff, you're talking, you know, a growth spurt, uh, an awakening and a revival that's coming. And God's people need to have this apostolic influence so that we can just do what God does and take advantage of the opportunities God presents to us without any fear, with humility. Because it's not because you're anything great or that I'm anything great. It's because God is putting a special anointing upon you. So I'm always, I don't want to say fearful, but I always have a concern that I'm going to fail God because I'm going to miss it. I'm going to be distracted, which of course the enemy would love to do. Or that I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to miss the timing. I always have a concern about that. So I'm always asking, Lord, help me to hear and see the timing. Help me to see the doors you're opening. Help me to, to see those opportunities and recognize the divine appointments. So I guess that's a good way to pray, to be ready and prepared for the apostolic influence God wants to do through us. Okay. The prophetic scripture comes out of Exodus 3, verse 10. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee. Now, I want to, I think I've said this before. God does, does not put you or in a position that is not part of your gifting. He might take you out of a comfort zone, but that doesn't mean he suddenly wants you to do something that is way off base that you would never do, although... His, the holy boldness could come upon you and who knows what, what God would do. But I'm just saying, God, he knows what he created you to be. He knows the giftings that he gave you. He knows exactly what he intended. It's being willing to function in that. Now, don't let fear have any part of what you're doing. Fear is always going to keep you away from God's plan and purpose. It's the opposite. Fear is the opposite of faith. And so I always tell the Lord, help my unbelief and take this fear from me. If there's any fear, take it from me. And I've battled fear a lot in a variety of areas. 
but I don't want to fail the Lord and I don't want to miss him. And so I guess, I don't know if that's your heart cry. That's my heart cry. Let's hear what Brenda has to say. She expounds on that. The word apostolic means sent. It means God endorses you and therefore is sending you to represent him for a particular task. Just like he sent Moses to Pharaoh in Exodus 3.10, when Moses encountered Pharaoh, there was no mistake about who sent him because he had several factors in place. To be apostolic doesn't mean you become an apostle, but it means you carry a sent one anointing. Thank you for that clarification. We all need to operate under the power of sending. It means we don't rise up and do things on our own, but we wait for certain factors to align. Thank you, Lord. Help me to wait. I could be a little impatient. Whether your part in God's kingdom is ministerial leadership or volunteer support, it needs an apostolic or sent one anointing upon it. Wow. Thank you, Brenda. For Thank you, Lord, for speaking through Brenda in this. It's really clearing it up. It's kind of getting the laser focus going here. Because most people think sent one, they think ministerial leadership. And, oh, that's not me. But you could be the volunteer support, and you still need the sent one anointing on it. The two key characteristics of this sending anointing are fruit and recognition. If you are truly called to help in a church by working in the sound department or prayer ministry, you will have fruit to show for it. Secondly, your gifts and abilities will be recognizable to other believers and ministry leaders. These factors must be present for those called to full-time ministry as well. Every one of us must be willing to humble ourselves until both legitimate fruit and recognition become evident. God wants you to, in, to be endowed with ascending anointing so you can influence people in an amazing way this year. That's wonderful. And I think it is important, they said, wait for the fruit to be evident and for the things to align. And, you know, at, at the risk of sounding critical, I've... Uh, and I don't mean this in any way because I'm sure their hearts are passionate. They're just, I think, jumping the gun in some instances. And I'm not going to name anyone specific because the Lord knows who it is. There's a lot of people that self-appoint themselves pastor of the church or they appoint themselves apostle this, evangelist this, and there's no fruit in their life that supports the claim of evangelist, uh, uh, supports the claim of apostle, supports the claim of these things. And they say, I'm starting a church and I'm the pastor of this church and they have six congregants. I think I remember a friend of mine telling me one time and she delivered a hard word. Let me tell you, um, there were three churches meeting in the same space, three churches, three churches meeting in this same space and at different times on Sunday, they each had their own little time block and there wasn't 25 congregants combined between those three churches. And I thought, where's the anointing? If God appointed you to that, you wouldn't have five or six people that you're talking to, probably family members. I mean, and she said, what is wrong, you know, with you guys? You need to come together in humility and humbleness. And uh, you seek God about this because God did not intend for ministries to be like that. It's not a good representation of him and who he is. And again, I'm not speaking a criticism because I've, I'm very careful to make sure I don't say anything against God's anointed. And my husband is finishing up his office. So if you hear sounds, that's him. Upstairs. I just heard the hammer going. But I think it's important. I think what she said here, the waiting for the fruit and the recognition, the anointing, the fruit and the recognition. And the recognition is that your gifts are visible and recognized by others in the kingdom. 
by those that are in leadership. God opens the door. He does. He opens the door. We just need to be humble and walk in obedience for that. And I, I pray, I'm going to be praying and chewing on this for a while because I want a better, greater understanding of it. Let's hear the prayer Brenda has to say. Father, I ask that you would mold me and develop my character. I humble myself and allow you to place a mature apostolic anointing upon me so that I can be a blessing in your kingdom. I wait on you for the full manifestation of ascending anointing in Jesus name. Amen. I really, April 1st, when I first started doing these, and that was the first day after I had uh, quit after 21 years or retired for a better, from working in a, a larger ministry at the, that the Lord's leading. And that first one is I have called you or I purposed you. And then this one here is I want mature apostolic anointing on me. I wait for you for the full manifestation of ascending anointing in Jesus name. I'm definitely going to be chewing on that for a while in, in my spirit and my prayer time. I want to make sure I'm hearing the Lord and where it is he's leading me. It's kind of maddening not knowing because I'm one of those ones. I like to have it all lined up. I like it all together. Be there nice, neat, and tidy, and I know what to expect. But I guess I'm going to be doing Abraham for a while and just trusting the Lord to open the doors as he's leading. Well, thanks again for spending some time with me today. I hope you have a blessed day. Make sure you once again like and subscribe, and then I'll see you tomorrow. Bye until next time.